I am over it. At this point, I'm ready for the alien invasion in November. Hell, why do they have to wait until November? I'm sure that they are advanced enough to get here a little bit quicker. Take the express lane. Come now. Come invade now. Save us from the radioactive wasps that are on the loose in Georgia and South Carolina. <laughs> but seriously, every morning I wake up and the first thing I do is I hop right into the news cycle and I find stories to talk to you guys about and I start doing research. Well, today I decided that I needed just a little break I woke up this morning, I hung out with my dogs, then I went on a little lunch date, and I said, you know what, I'm not going to check the news this morning. Last week was already crazy enough for me. Of course, we had the news of the alien invasion in November. Of course, we're talking about this crazy haunted Annabelle doll. The radioactive wasp, there's like a nuclear leak somewhere in South Carolina or something. It was already crazy enough for me last week. I was hoping that we would start this new week out fresh. Maybe the news would be a little less weird. Maybe for once in a very long time, I would feel like maybe we aren't living in some type of weird alternate dimension. Well, after going and grabbing lunch, I decided, well, now's the time to check the news really quickly. Guess what? <laughs> Guess the story that popped up on my phone first. The first bit of news that I see is something about a hot mystery blob under the ground headed to New York City. Now, just yesterday, when we found out about the radioactive wasps, I told you guys it feels like we're living in an episode of, like, a Halloween episode of The Simpsons, The Treehouse of Horror, a horror anthology movie or something. And I saw a comment under that video. Someone was saying that the radioactive wasps reminded them of like a 1950s sci-fi movie or something. And they hit the nail right on the head with that one because this reminds me of the same thing as well. I used to love those movies, those old movies. When I was growing up, I would watch them with my mom or my grandparents. I think my favorite was like Giant Ants or something. I used to love those old sci-fi horror movies. And there was one called The Blob. And now, here we are today. I was thinking that today would start off normal. Of course not. We're starting off today, or at least I started off my news day, with the mysterious hot blob story. So, yeah, of course this caught my eye. Especially coming off of the heels of everything else that we dealt with last week. So this go. I think this is letting us know that this week is not going to be normal either. We may never get another normal week again on planet Earth <laughs> from the looks of things. I really, I really just want to wake up one day and everything just be chill and peaceful for one day. One day without UFOs, haunted dolls, mysterious hot blobs, people going crazy and unaliving people you know, in the streets and in businesses. I just want one day, but I don't think we're ever going to get that day. I don't think we're ever going to get that day. But what we are going to get is we're going to get some sort of a hot blob catastrophe in New York City somewhere down the line. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, I'm so... <laughs> I'm exhausted with this stuff. Let's go ahead and dive into this article. Let's find out more about this hot blob, though. A massive, mysterious, hot blob beneath eastern U.S. is moving towards New York. It is puzzling scientists. Is this the start of Goo York City? 
UK scientists have discovered a massive blob underneath the Appalachian Mountains that is slowly oozing its way towards New York City per a slimy new study published in the Journal of Geology. This thermal upwelling has long been a puzzling feature of North American geology. The study's lead author, Tom Jernan, professor of earth science at the University of Southampton, said in a statement, officially dubbed the North Appalachian Anomaly, this subterranean slime ball sits 125 feet deep underground and extends 220 miles across New England. The team reportedly discovered it using seismic tomography, a method akin to taking a giant CAT scan of the Earth. While originally thought to have formed 180 million years ago when North America broke away from Africa, the new research suggests that it appeared 80 million years ago when the precursor land masses to Canada and Greenland were splitting apart. It lies beneath part of the continent that's been tectonically quiet for 180 million years. So the idea that it was just a leftover from when the land mass broke apart never quite stacked up, said Jernan. In a study published last year in the journal Nature, the team described how this molten mantle molasses is created when hot rock sitting just outside the Earth's core rises to fill cracks in the crust caused by land rifts. When this material eventually cools, it sinks or drips, causing a ripple effect along the lower surfaces of the continents that has been called mantle waves. By using a combination of direct geological observations, computer simulations, and model plate tectonics and geodynamics, the team was able to replicate the formation of a hot blob 1,120 miles northeast of the Appalachians. They found that the primordial ooze was moving southwest at a clip of 12 miles every million years. Fortunately, we don't need to prepare for an blob <laughs> we don't need to prepare for a a blob apocalypse anytime soon. At this rate, researchers estimate that blobzilla will reach NYC in 10 or 15 million years like a very slow moving B-movie monster. It takes a while for underground movements to make a splash in the Big Apple. The simulation also showed that the blob may have helped uplift the Appalachians explaining why the mountain range remains so high despite significant erosion over the past 20 million years. Heat at the base of a continent can weaken and remove part of its dense, um, dense root, making the continent lighter and more buoyant like a hot air balloon rising after dropping. This would have caused the ancient mountains to be further uplifted over the past million years. After the blob departs the region, however, the Earth's crust will settle once again and erosion will continue to wear down the mountains gradually, lowering their elevation, scientists say. This seismic SERP is perhaps also the reason why rare volcanic eruptions can help bring diamonds to the surface. While the study was predominantly centered around the NAA, the team also focused on its twin, an alarm an anomalous hot zone situated beneath north central Greenland. This tectonic lava lamp, which was created during the same continental fragmentation, but on the other side of the rift, like a molasses Y mirror, generates heat currents at the base of the miles thick ice sheet 
influencing how the ice moves and melts today. Ancient heat anomalies continue to play a key role in shaping the dynamics of continental ice sheets from below. Even though the surface shows little sign of ongoing tectonics, deep below, the consequences of ancient rifting are still playing out. Whew! So reading that article made me feel a little bit better. Because folks, we got enough to deal with right now. We got the radioactive wasp. We got the aliens coming. We don't need any hot blobs popping out the ground in New York City, right? I think we can all agree there. Luckily, this is something that's not supposed to happen that shouldn't affect New York City for millions of years. But from what I was reading, there are still some concerns. Because this blob is a very large blob. And scientists suspect that there may be smaller blobs that they're unaware of. Smaller blobs that are even older than this massive blob that they're tracking right now. Smaller blobs that could be making their way to New York City today, tomorrow, or the next day. They don't really know for sure. And I'm no scientist. Okay, I don't know anything about this stuff. I saw a hot blob. I said, you know what? That don't sound good. <laughs> but I'm just wondering because, look, we got all of this, like, we got earthquakes happening all of the time now. They seem a little more frequent. The natural disasters seem a little more frequent. Could it have anything to do? like the tsunamis and the earthquakes that we've been seeing lately, can it have anything to do with these hot blobs of like molten rock that are traveling under the ground? Could it have anything to do with that? I don't know. I think that's a possibility that's on the table though, right? So hopefully this is the only hot blob that we have to worry about, but who knows? Like I said, life is already crazy enough as is, we don't need to deal with anything extra at all, at all. I think we all have enough on our plates. I think we all have enough to deal with. And I, I'm just, I am extremely grateful that this hot blob is going to, you know, hopefully wait a couple of million years before wreaking havoc. But just think about that. Think about it for a minute. Millions and millions of years from now, the world is going to look much different than it looks right now. And there could be some type of super advanced crazy city in New York. And next thing you know, the hot blob just just comes right out of the <laughs> out of the earth. I don't know. I just I just wonder what could go wrong with this. And OK, they're discussing right now that, oh, the hot blob is on the way to New York. But don't worry, it won't be to New York for like 15 million years. OK, cool. Well, what about where it's at now? Is this hot blob causing issues where it's at now? Is there a possibility that we're going to have like volcanoes and just random things popping up along the way? I don't know. I'm just wondering how this is going to affect things moving forward. But for now, I guess we're all safe from the hot blob today. You guys let me know what you think down below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all very soon in the next one.